the, um, when we talk about return, it actually is three things. It's the physical return of the refugee. Uh, it's also the restitution of the property. Uh, and it's compensation for the injury. Uh, so there's, there's two main ways of looking at the right of return uh, in the law. Uh, one is just sort of refugee law uh, and human rights law at large, uh, which is where you can find very clear references to return, restitution, or compensation, uh, which is also very clear in UN resolutions on Palestinian refugees, specifically UN Resolution 194. Uh, but um, the issue with Palestine is that it's not a regular refugee case. Uh, it's a case of population transfer, which is a crime. It's a war crime. And in cases where you talk about crimes, you're actually talking about reparations as the remedy. And so uh, um, within reparations, uh, it's actually called restitution, not return. Uh, so restitution encompasses return in, in reparations. Uh, but then when you're talking about reparations, you're talking about a basket of things. So it starts with restitution, uh, but it also includes things like a guarantee of non-repetition. Uh, satisfaction of the victim, which can include a whole host of things like truth and reconciliation commissions and um, it, uh, apologies are part of a rep reparations package. Uh, and then there's, I mean, there's a lot written on this, but so it's, it's a much uh, broader thing, but uh, restitution is a key thing. And in the cases of reparations, it's almost like the property comes before the, the issue of return. I mean, the main idea uh, with reparations is uh, it's kind of like in civil law, like if I crash your car or if I wreck your house by mistake or something. Um, you tr what the, the perpetrator has to do is try to do whatever they can to, to <coughs> bring the situation back to what it was before the act, before the commission of the crime. Or, and so um, that's where you get all of, uh, all of this. So, uh, this, this is where compensation becomes a very big issue for the injury that was committed and what people have undergone over the past 61 years. Uh, but then the most basic thing is that property that was stolen needs to be given back. So have you taken any cases to court? This is actually a really complicated uh, question. Because we're not a state, we don't have standing in places like the International Court of Justice. Um, and because of the political situation, uh, it's very difficult to go through these international legal bodies. Um, what's starting to happen more and more is this idea of universal jurisdiction in a domestic court. The idea that I can go to a Spanish court and try a case that happened elsewhere. Uh, this is beginning to open up some space, but what it's mostly being used for is uh, you know, the more classic kind of war crimes, like the destruction of a neighborhood. Like the most famous case is the case happening in Spain now for the Shahada assassination case uh, from 2002, where a one-ton bomb was dropped on a building in Gaza uh, and killed like 74 people um, and injured 500 people and wiped out a neighborhood. Um, so it's these kinds of cases that are being, because they're just so cut and dry, to try to go to a domestic court to to be like the right of return for six million Palestinian refugees is not... Um, if this case were ever taken to court, it would be a very easy verdict. It would be a very clear uh, verdict. You actually... Uh, we don't even really have a demand that the issue of the refugees be taken to the International Court of Justice because the law is so clear on it. You don't really need the ICJ to repeat what the international community has said time and time again uh, or on the legal side of things. Uh, like what the UN has said in its resolutions or what, uh, what the law says on the issue of refugees, it's, it's quite clear. Um, so in the way that you wouldn't have to take like the Rwandan genocide to the ICJ because genocide's a crime. We don't need a court to tell us it's a crime. Um, so this is why uh, there's, well, the emphasis isn't on an ICJ decision for, or an advisory opinion from the ICJ on something like this. The emphasis is uh, is that the main barriers are political barriers, and that's so there needs to be political change for anything to happen.